Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial we're going to be creating some seamless pattern brushes created from hand-drawn mini doodles. And I wanted to kind of keep it a secret so I can show you how awesome they are when you're using them. So I'm going to show you that right now and this will be the final outcome of this tutorial. So I'm just going to hit N on my keyboard. I'm just going to draw a random line and then I'm going to come over and these are the brushes that we're going to be creating and all I have to do is click on one and suddenly I've got it applied to my line and if I wanted that same pattern to be applied to a circle all I have to let me get this one out of the way all I have to do is have my circle selected click on my pattern brush and just like that you can get some really cool laurels uh, I created a few more just to kind of show off everything that it can do Here's another one. These are really fun to make and pretty addicting. There's another one. And of course, you can draw any kind of line that you want. And you just click on the brush that you want to apply it to. And just like that, you've got it applied. So these are really powerful to kind of up any layouts that you have in a really quick and easy way. So I'm going to jump right in and show you exactly how to make this very quickly and very easily and totally seamlessly. So you can't see if you look at any of these, you can't tell where the break is. It's a continuous line the whole way through. So that's what we want right here. We want to trick people into thinking that it's just a continuous thing and that it was never one little section of this whole thing. So we're just going to create a new document. I'm going to go file new. And it doesn't really matter what's here. I'm just going to leave the default settings of a letter size 11 by 8.5 horizontal format. Color mode CMYK as if you were going to print it. Make sure you change this to RGB if you want to use it on the web. And just hit OK. And now I'm going to bring in my hand-drawn mini doodle scan. Um, I use the Scanner Pro app on my iPhone, which makes things really easy for bringing in hand-drawn artwork. You could also refer to, uh, I have two past how to vectorize hand-drawn doodles and topography. Um, if you wanna follow those ones, that's kind of more about bringing it into Photoshop first and creating some high contrast and then bringing it into Illustrator if you don't have that app. I think the app costs around $2, totally worth it. I use it like every day. So I'm just gonna bring that in and you'll see what it does. So I'm just gonna place my mini doodle and as you can see, this was just a little sketch on a sheet of paper. I took a picture with my phone and then it made it really high contrast. So I don't even have to worry about bringing it into Photoshop because that app has already done the work for me. So I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit so it's not so huge. And the first thing I need to do, you can tell it's definitely a rasterized image because I've got this big box on it. So I need to vectorize it. So the way that I do this is I just come up here and go image trace. And I actually am just going to use, since this is a very simple doodle, I'm just going to use the default settings for this. So it's pretty rough, but we're going to clean that up. Next, we're going to hit expand. And then we're going to hit ungroup because whenever you use live trace, it kind of groups everything together. So I'm just going to hit command shift G or control shift G on a PC to ungroup it and then click anywhere and now we've got like white in here and the way that I get rid of all the white is I just hit Y on my keyboard and that's your magic wand tool. I'm just going to click in the white area and then hit delete or backspace on a PC and now all the white's gone and all we have left is our doodle and every piece is separate because we had ungrouped everything. So now I'm going to come in here and first I'm going to group all these together because I kind of like how they're all positioned and I want to keep them together. So I'm just going to hit command G or control G on a PC to group them together. And this is kind of a rough and dirty how I clean things up um, using the pencil tool and definitely refer to those other tutorials that I mentioned for more in-depth information on how to do this. But I'm just going to kind of give you the spark notes version of this. You have to select your item and then hit N on your keyboard and this activates your pencil tool. And with the item selected, you can see I've got the blue path around all this. So that tells me it's selected. I need to start along the path, click and then kind of redraw out how I want to fix things to look. But I need to make sure that this item is selected the entire time or it's not going to work. And I have to start on the path and I have to finish on the path with the pencil tool. Otherwise you'll get some weird lines that don't connect. So I'm just going to speed up the video and finish cleaning this up and then I'll be back and we'll go over how to make it seamless.
Okay, so I've done a decent job of cleaning this up for time's sake. And I did want to mention when you create your own mini doodles and you bring them in, make sure that your mini doodle has a straight line down the center or no line at all. Um, if you have kind of a curvy line, it's going to be far more difficult to kind of trick the viewer into feeling like it's totally seamless because everything has to match up perfectly. So I would suggest if you're just starting out with this and you don't want to do anything too crazy complicated, um, have a line down the middle or don't have any line at all. But I'm, I like having the line down the middle especially because um, using kind of floral elements for laurels is really pretty and very on trend these days. So that's why this is the example we're using. Okay, so a couple things to know when you're making something seamless. First, I'm gonna turn on my rulers and I'm gonna do that by hitting Command R, Control R on a PC and you can see they showed up here. And I'm just gonna drag out a guide. So I'm just gonna click on my left ruler and drag and then release. And as you can see, this is not very straight. So I need to straighten this up. So I'm just gonna select it and then Wait until I get my little rotate icon and kind of line it up as best as I can to keep it straight. And that's looking pretty good. I've got it kind of right down the center. So the next thing that we need to talk about is whenever you create a pattern brush, it's going to connect things based on the furthest most top um, element and then the bottom element. So in this case, it's this bottom stem, which is good. That's what I want. But up here, it's going to be this leaf instead of this stem. So this stem, this top stem, stem always needs to be taller than your last leaf. And I found that things look more seamless if your bottom stem is as close to the bottom of this as possible. So we're, we're going to shorten this bottom stem and we're going to lengthen this top stem. So the way that you do that is just hit A on your keyboard for your direct select tool and you're just going to rubber band select the top portion of your stem and then hit the arrow up key on your keyboard and you're just going to keep hitting it until you know for sure it's extending beyond the top part of this leaf. And once you have that, now we're going to come down to this bottom part and we're going to shorten this one just so we can make for a more believable transition. So once again, I'm just going to rubber band select using my direct select tool, use the arrow up key and kind of move this way up. And if things get weird down here, which they probably will, you can easily fix it by just with it selected, hitting N on your keyboard. And just the same way that we cleaned up our vectors at the beginning, we're just gonna do the same thing here. Just make sure you're starting on a path and finishing on a path. Okay. So whenever you're creating that seamless transition for your pattern brush, the best way to create a seamless transition is to have a flat edge hit a flat edge. And right now, if we look at our stems, we've got kind of a curved edge up here and a really wonky edge down here. So we need to flatten these out so when they hit each other, they'll, they'll mesh together nice and even. So the way that we can create a flat edge up here is hit M on your keyboard for your shape tool, your rectangle tool and you're just gonna slice off the top part of the stem, but you still wanna make sure where you're slicing is still above the tip of this leaf. Next, we're gonna select everything by hitting V on your keyboard for your selection tool and then just rubber band selecting everything. Next, we're gonna come over here to our Pathfinder palette, and if you don't see it, you can get to it by going Window, Pathfinder, and just hit this little divide icon down here. Next, you're gonna to have to ungroup this because whenever you use Pathfinder, it always groups your items together. So hit Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G on a PC to ungroup. You're gonna select this part of the rectangle that we don't need and just hit Delete. And now you can see we've separated this curved top part of the stem. So we're just gonna click on that and also delete it. And now we've got a flat edge, which is perfect. But we need to make sure this flat edge is the same flat edge down here. That way when they come together, you can't tell. So in order to do that, we're kind of going to repeat the same thing we just did. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and create another rectangle that covers a decent portion of the top part of your stem. And this time I'm going to change its color so we can kind of keep track of it as we go. So just choose any color you want. Next, we're going to rubber band select everything again. Come over to your Pathfinder palette, hit the divide icon ungroup everything by hitting command shift G or control shift G on a PC. And this time we're just going to delete this kind of outer rectangle portion. So we're left with this top part of our stem. So we need to bring this top part of our stem to the bottom part of our stem. So we're gonna click on the top part, 
We're going to hold Alt on our keyboard and that will make a copy. Click and as you're dragging, hold Shift and that will keep it perfectly in line, which is really important when we're making this seamless. And you're just going to bring it down here. So now we've got everything in line, but this part of this top part of our stem, we need to be the bottom part of our stem so they hit in the same exact places. So you're going to select this portion, right click, transform, reflect, and choose the horizontal axis for the reflection and hit OK. All right, so that just pushed it down here, which is perfect. And now we're just going to click. And as you're dragging, hold shift because we want to make sure this is staying straight. So whenever I'm dragging, I'm holding shift. And I'm just going to bring it down far enough where I cover up the previous stem. So now you can see not everything lines up perfectly right here, but that's totally fine. We'll fix it. So I'm going to zoom out first and we're, we need to group everything back together again because now we have three parts and we need to make this one part again. Um, so we're just going to rubber band select everything and hit the unite icon over here in your Pathfinder palette. And this makes it all one shape again. And at this point you can just change it back to black if you want. Okay, so we need to fix what's going on down here. And this is pretty easy. We're going to do the same thing we did before with cleaning up our vectors. I'm just going to select it and then hit N on my keyboard for my pencil tool and kind of smooth out these transitions. Make them a little, whoops, make them a little smoother. And make sure you're starting along a path and finishing along a path. Otherwise, what just happened to me will happen to you. Okay. And you can come in here too with your um, delete anchor point tool if you want and just kind of remove some of these points and that'll make things a little smoother too. Okay, the nice thing about doing leafy elements is it's all organic, so your hand-drawn stuff is still totally believable. All right, so we can test out how seamless things are right now. And all you have to do is click on your little mini doodle, hold Alt, click, and as you're dragging, hold shift, and that'll keep it straight. And we're just gonna line it up down here and we're gonna kind of inspect our work. So this is a little weirder than I'd like it to be. So if I were to go back, I'd chop it a little further down so I wouldn't have this curve. But for now, we're just gonna roll with it. This side, it's pretty good. Um, but this part, I think, would, will hardly be noticeable anyway. So just an FYI. Okay, so now we're ready to create our pattern brush. The important thing to remember when you're creating your pattern brush is you want to create a pattern brush with your element being horizontal. Right now we've got a, vor a vertical orientation, so I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to hold Alt and click and just drag it over here. And now I'm going to get that rotation icon showing up. Click and as you're dragging, hold Shift and that'll give you a perfect 90 degree um, rotation. And now you're going to come over here to your brush palette. And if you don't see this, you can get to it by going window brushes. And these are kind of the default brushes that open with Illustrator. So you can delete these just by clicking and drag them into the trash or you can just leave them. It doesn't matter. But we're going to hit this little icon down here for a new brush. And when this palette shows up, you're going to choose pattern brush and hit OK. So over here, we are going to name our pattern. Let's name it leafy. And the only thing we need to alter here, spacing is 0%, that means it's going to butt up right next to each other, which is exactly what we want. But we need to click on approximate path because if you leave it to stretch to fit, it's not going to retain the quality that you have with your mini doodle right now. It's going to stretch it out and it's going to look weird, so don't do that. So click on approximate path and hit OK. And now you can see we've got a new little brush over here and we can test it out. So I'm just going to hit N on my keyboard and draw just a random path over here. And then I'm going to click on my brush and you can see it's immediately applied. And if I want it to show up a little smaller, if I feel like this is too big, I can come over here to my stroke palette and you can get to that by going window stroke. And if I reduce the weight of my stroke with it still selected and maybe I want to go down to half a point. You can see that automatically will reduce the size of my brush. So pretty easy and pretty fun and really cool to customize however you want. And if we want to apply it to a close path like an ellipse, I'm going to actually create a circle out of this. So I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to hold alt, click and drag. And then I can come back to my brush and just click on my brush and it'll apply it. And once again, if you want to reduce the size of it, no big deal. You can just do that right in your stroke palette 
Just make sure it's selected when you do that. So you can get some pretty cool outcomes very easily with some hand-drawn mini doodles. So that's how to create a seamless pattern brush in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.